Hi, it's Craig Beals again. We're going to look at stoichiometry for use in chemistry, and we're going to put all the pieces of the previous videos together. So we're going to look at when you need to do a conversion from mass to mass, mass of reactants to mass of product. Um, so in other words, when you're given grams and you need your answer in grams, um, this is the procedure we're going to go through. Now we're going to use the same five super simple steps that um, I used in previous videos, and we're just going to need to use all the steps. In a lot of those videos prior, we didn't have to use them all, but here we will. So if we look down here, step number one says, in the question, what is uh, the known and what is the unknown? So I like to figure out what the known is, and I'll put green under that. If I read all the way through this, the known, as you remember, is generally the one that has a number with it. The known is what is given in the equation. And then the unknown is what we're at, whatever we're trying to solve for. This says determine the mass of water produced. So we need to take 25.0 grams of ammonium nitrate, NH4NO3, and we need to turn that into grams of water that are produced after this reaction happens. I've got some more room on the next slide, so um, we're going to move over there. For step one, I've transferred everything over to this slide because we have a little more room. Now I need to write a balanced chemical equation for step two right here. And this is a decomposition reaction where ammonium nitrate is going to decompose into N2O gas and water. Now I should have the states of matter on there. I haven't included them just for space. Um, and I think it's something you can always go back and put in there. Let's just get the concepts down for now. Let me clean this up a little bit for my water. Um, so I've got plus H2O. I need a little room to balance this out. So now I need to balance it. I use the tree method. I've got nitrogen over here, I've got hydrogen over here, and I've got oxygen. I have both of those on both sides. I just write down how many I have in the product, uh, the reactant side and in the product side. I've got, let's see, two nitrogens on this side. I've got four hydrogens and I've got three oxygens. On the other side, I've got two nitrogens, I've got two hydrogens, and I've got two oxygens. The nitrogens are balanced. I don't need to do anything there. The hydrogens are not balanced. I need to have more hydrogen on my product side. Easiest way to do that, let's put a 2 right there. That's going to change my hydrogens to 4. And it's going to change my, sorry, it's going to change my oxygens. So I count the N2O and the H2O to 3. And now I've got this whole thing balanced. So I'm done with step 2. Let me erase all of this. In step 3, Get a different colored pen. Step three, it says convert the grams of known to moles. Our known is in green up here, 25.0 grams of solid ammonium nitrate. We need to have that in moles because in stoichiometry, we have to do all of our work in moles. The way to turn that into moles is right here. We take 25.0 grams of solid NH4NO3. I need to times that by a conversion factor so that when I'm done, I end up, like it says right here, I'm in moles of NH4NO3. Sorry about the poor handwriting. The only way to do that is to have grams of NH4NO3 on the bottom of this conversion factor so that these two will cancel out. My grams will. And I can turn grams into moles, which is what I want my answer in, of NH4NO3, but I have to figure out what the mass of one mole of NH4NO3 is. So I need to look up the mass of all of these on the periodic table, um, and I will write them out. If you need to fast forward through this part, feel free to do so. But I need to figure out nitrogen, and nitrogen has a mass of, I look on my periodic table, Nitrogen has a, mo a mass of 14.01 grams, so that takes care of that nitrogen. I've got hydrogen. I have four of them. My periodic table, it says it has a mass of 1.01 grams per mole, and I've got four. That gives me 4.04 grams. Then I've got another nitrogen, so that takes care of that one. I've got another nitrogen here. I already looked that up. It was 14.01 grams, and then I've got three oxygens right here. So oxygen times three, and oxygen is 15.99 
we'll round it off um, times 3. That's going to give me 47.97 grams. Now I've got all of them underlined um, to figure out the molar mass of NH4NO3. When I add all of those together, I get 80.06. I am rounding some of this off, so if yours is slightly different, that's perfectly fine. I'm trying to keep the numbers simple. So 80.06 goes right here. I'm going to do some erasing. I'll come back. So I take my 25 grams, I times it by 1, and I divide by 80.06, and I end up with right about 0.312 moles of NH4NO3. So I've just completed step 3. Step 4 says calculate the unknown in moles. I come back over here and look at the unknown. It's in red. The unknown is the mass of water. This is where I do dimensional analysis. In dimensional analysis, I always, I always start with... Um, what I know, and I just converted my known right here into moles because in stoichiometry we always use moles. So I'm going to move that number right down here. I'm going to switch colors just to make it easier to see. I'm going to take 0.312 moles of NH4NO3, which is this number right here. So you could continue the equation on. I'm kind of out of room, so I have to start over here. I need some conversion factor because this step right here says calculate the unknown. I'm trying to calculate the mass of water, but it says calculate the moles of water for now. We have to do this step first. So I can put mole of water here because I want my answer in mole of water. And I have to put mole of NH4NO3 right here so that these two will cancel out across the end of my conversion factor. I'll be left right up here in moles of water. That's what I want my answer in. So I've got this set up correctly so far. Now I go back up to my balanced chemical equation to find these. So right here it says there's an imaginary one right there that says one mole of NH4NO3. This is called a mole ratio. For every two, there's the two right there, for every two moles of water. So I put a two right here. So all I have to do now is take my 0 0.312 times 2, and I get 0.624 moles of water. So I've just done step 4. Step 5, now I need to convert moles of the unknown, right here, this is moles of the unknown, remember the unknown is water, convert moles of unknown um, into mass, because if I come back up here, I'm getting a lot of writing, it says I need the mass of water that's produced. So let me switch colors one more time. I'm going to move this number, 0.624 moles of water. Again, that's just this number I'm moving down. You could continue on, but I'm kind of out of space. I need some conversion factor with moles of water on the bottom so that these will cancel out. And I want my answer in grams of water because that's what I'm trying to solve the whole equation for. Now, I can turn moles of water into grams of water with molar mass just like I did before. I know that one mole is just the mass of all the parts and pieces that make up the water. So I need to look up H and I have two of them and I know the mass if I look on my periodic table is 1.01 .01 times 2 is going to give me 2.02 .02 grams. Water, I only have one of those and water is or I'm sorry, oxygen is 15.99. When I add both of those together, this and this, I get the mass of one mole of water, which is 18.01. I'm going to clean this up and get a little bit of room. Now, all I need to do to finish out my equation, because that's going to cancel, that's going to cancel, I'm left in grams of water, and that's what I want my answer in, is grams of water. So I take 0.624, times 18.01 and I get 11.24 grams of water. This is my final answer for mass to mass stoichiometry. This answer tells me that in the decomposition reaction of ammonium nitrate, if I start with 25 grams of ammonium nitrate and I put it in the soil, as it decomposes I'm going to be adding 11.24 grams of water into that soil through the decomposition reaction.
So, now you know all the parts and pieces of stoichiometry. There's a couple more things you need to learn, like limiting reactant. That'll be the next one we look at. And then after that, we'll look at percent yield, and you've got stoichiometry down. So keep it up, and good luck.